My company has declared a climate emergency, but what are the practical steps that I took to calculate my initial greenhouse gas emissions baseline, and how did I do the calculations? I share my three-step approach to making an initial greenhouse gas baseline in this video. Let's take a look. Welcome to EMS Mastery, where we look at the successful strategies and tactics to master environmental management and sustainability. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Andrew Marlow. This episode looks at how I calculated my initial baseline greenhouse gas emissions for my company after declaring a climate emergency. Coming up next in other episodes in this series of seven episodes will be setting science-based targets, followed by calculating my greenhouse gas footprint and offsetting any unavoidable emissions. The first and second episodes in this series on seven options to declare a climate emergency and which option I chose to declare the climate emergency are available in the link here or in the description box below. This episode looks at the practical steps that are a consequence of declaring a climate emergency on behalf of my business through the United Nations Climate Neutral Now and the Pledge to Net Zero initiative. Here are my initial three steps that I use to measure, calculate and report my company's greenhouse gas emission baseline as an integral part of my net zero journey. This is an important stage of any net zero journey as it sets the marker for the initial greenhouse gas performance of the company and will be used to set future targets and monitoring of greenhouse gas reductions against the initial baseline. Firstly, it's important to understand your energy sources and to quantify the energy and greenhouse gas emissions from each source. For my environmental and sustainability consultancy, like many other businesses, the business data such as energy bills, business mileage and flights are contained in our financial management system. Some of the information is readily available, such as business car mileage, which is claimed in accordance with the rates approved by HMRC. However, other data, such as flights and rail journeys, are not readily available from the financial management system, nor from airlines or rail companies. Here, you can use third-party websites, such as the International Civil Aviation Organization, for airline journeys by specifying the start and end of the journey and the class of seating on the plane, as the class can make a difference in the calculation due to the passenger density on the plane. For train travel, Rail Miles is a useful website that can be used to determine the miles travelled on a train anywhere in the United Kingdom. In a larger organisation, you may find that there is a plethora of information available within your organisation. It should be possible to identify those persons, usually in the finance department, who have access to energy bills, leased car mileage and grey fleet where personal vehicles are driven for business purposes. If you're getting value out of this episode, why not click on the like button and while you're there, click on the subscribe and notification bell to ensure that you don't miss out on other episodes in the future. I'm not saying that this is an easy process. Some information on energy bills is readily available and with some effort can be used to report on greenhouse gas emissions. Other information, such as grey fleet use, will normally be in the cost of expenses rather than miles or litres of fuel used. 
other activities may be relevant if you manufacture or produce goods as well as services. The next step is to take the information on the sources, types and quantities of energy used and to convert them into greenhouse gas emissions. For my company, our initial greenhouse gas emissions were calculated for the year 2016, which is my reference year for determining the baseline of my company's greenhouse gas emissions. I used the UK greenhouse gas reporting conversion factors for 2016, which can be freely downloaded from the gov.uk website to calculate my greenhouse gas emissions. Other conversion factors are available for all the years from 2012 to the present day and are normally published in June or July. Our video with links to the conversion factors for 2022 can be found in the link here and in the description box below. You can calculate your greenhouse gas emissions by using a simple formula of activity data such as kilowatt hours multiplied by the relevant emission conversion factor. So for example you should use the conversion factor for UK electricity of 0 0.41205 as the emission conversion factor and multiply it by the number of kilowatts of electricity used, such as 1,100 used in this simple example calculation. The calculation would be 1,100 kilowatt hours times 0 0.41205. Therefore, the greenhouse gas emissions from UK electricity would be 453.255 kilograms of carbon dioxide equivalent. You will note that I have calculated the greenhouse gas emissions and presented them as kilograms of carbon dioxide equivalent, as this takes into account all greenhouse gases and not just carbon dioxide. However, if you wanted to calculate the carbon dioxide value, then you would use a specific conversion factor of 0 0.40957 to calculate the kilograms of carbon dioxide. Please note that the conversion factors vary from one year to another. And you should always use the correct conversion factors for the year that you're looking at. There are a wide range of conversion factors that can be used not only to calculate greenhouse gas emissions from the use of energy, but also from business mileage and also from the use of waste disposal and hotel stays. Finally, and based on the output from all of my greenhouse gas emissions calculations, I calculated my initial baseline greenhouse gas emissions based on the scope 1, 2 and 3 approach. You can find out more about scopes 1, 2 and 3 in the video here and in the description box below. My baseline greenhouse gas emissions for 2016 were scope 1, which are my company's direct greenhouse gas emissions, which occur from sources that are owned or controlled by the company, such as emissions from gas boilers or car business travel. These greenhouse gas emissions were six tonnes of CO2 equivalent. Scope 2, which accounts for the greenhouse gas emissions from the generation of purchased electricity consumed by the company, these greenhouse gas emissions were two tonnes of CO2 equivalent. And finally, scope three, which are other indirect emissions as a consequence of the activities of my company, but occur from sources not owned or controlled by my company, such as airline flights, rail journeys and hotel stays. These greenhouse gas emissions were 150 tonnes of CO2 equivalent. 
these greenhouse gas emissions as the baseline greenhouse gas emissions for my company were important in establishing the starting point for my net zero journey and to measure my company's greenhouse gas emission performance for each year under the two initiatives of the United Nations Climate Neutral Now and the UK's Pledge to Net Zero. Additionally, an initial greenhouse gas baseline is important to be used in determining a science-based target under both of those initiatives. In my next episode in this series, I will look at the setting of the important science-based targets so that it is possible to align these targets with the Paris Agreement targets and to phrase my company's own targets in a meaningful way by being open and transparent in how the targets were set and how performance of greenhouse gas emissions reductions can be evaluated. Click on the video link at the end of this video to follow the fourth and next episode on how I set science-based targets. Further information on how to calculate a company greenhouse gas emissions baseline, including the resources mentioned in this episode, are given in the description box below, including a link to the resources on the emsmastery.com website. I welcome your comments and thoughts about the calculation of my company's greenhouse gas emissions baseline or the process that you have used or are considering to use. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel to ensure that you don't miss out on other episodes on environmental management and sustainability. If you enjoyed this video, you can watch other episodes by clicking on the boxes in the top and bottom right and to subscribe to this channel, click on the link to the left. Thank you.